Okay, so lips. Lips are not like a nose because they don't have cartilage. They're not like a... Is my touch screen on or off? Off. Okay. Um, they're not like eyes where they have a socket and an actual muscle shaped like a circle underneath. They're not like a skeletal structure. They don't have any skeletal structure. They're entire muscles. So it's like it's like the only place on the face that is completely muscles and um, has no assisting structural background. So with lips, the main, main, main focus is um, that they are not, the first thing that you're supposed to learn is that they are not cartilage. Okay. Not cartilage. I spelled that right, or bone. Okay, they're not. What they are, okay, is flesh, fat, skin, and muscle. These you have to paint. Each and every single one of them you have to paint. And blood, of course. Lips sort of, lips act like the chin. They really con, um, act like a conclusive uh, subject for the face. They really just make or break a face sometimes. Um, along with every other uh, feature, of course, noses are also play a big part. But lips have their own sort of prettiness to them. And you can you really play with them a lot to change the face completely. So again, lips are not cartilage or bone, and they are flesh, fat, skin, and muscle. So if we were to paint this, and we have all of these three subjects, all four of these subjects, we have flesh, fat, skin, and muscle. Which do we paint first? So I didn't put them in order. Which do we have to understand first? We have to understand muscle first. So muscle comes first. Always, when you paint lips, you have to understand the muscles involved. And the idea behind lip muscles is that, let me find a good diagram for you. I hope they don't give us like realistic creepy stuff. Okay, so for fail. So for lips, um, if you guys can see, what we have are the way a lip smiles is when a lip smiles and when, you, when, when, when someone says, okay, smile with your whole face, smile with your eyes, it means that you're using the muscles that pull the lips up. So lip muscles, you can't really move the fat on the lips. The fat is separate entity. So when you have, so this area here is a separate entity. It doesn't have much muscle in it. So when you have lips, okay, so let's say you have a pair of lips that are smiling. Okay, you have lips. The surrounding muscles here and here do the lip moving for you, which is why other muscles around the eyes get affected. But this is what you have to understand first when you start painting lips. You have to understand which areas actually move and which areas stay, which areas stack when you're painting lips that are sort of puckered and which areas don't stack. So these areas here are the fat, which comes next, sort of. Um, I know that you think that skin comes next, but skin acts sometimes uh, in a different way than fat. Fat is just the underlying mass of lips, but the but the skin on top is where we get those those familiar creases here and here. That's the breakage and if some of you might notice if you don't wear Vaseline on your lips or anything you'll get very chapped lips and that's because the skin on the lips is very different from the skin everywhere else. It's designed to get damaged and heal fast. Um, the lips are very, they're, they're sort of anticipating damage because they're constantly moving, constantly eating. Food has sharp objects. The entire cavity of your mouth is anticipating damage. So the skin is very different. It gets chapped easier and it gets broken easier. So when you move your lips around, skin folds. And that's one of the main things. So we have muscle first, then we have the fat. And then we have... So flesh basically is the entire entire subject of it, the entire collective thing, but flesh sort of comes back in the end. And then we have skin. 
So what does muscle do? It's the movement, um, the function. Then fat is the, um, the mass of it, the actual thickness or fullness of the lips. The skin is the, uh, the top layer, sort of like the top soil, um, the top detail, the detailing aspect of lips. Um, so detailing meaning surface, texture. And you're literally painting in this in this order. You first have to understand the muscle. Muscle meaning you have to understand how the lips are moving. What kind of lips are we drawing here? What are they doing? What kind of what kind of action are they in? Then comes the fat meaning when you when I taught you guys the two dots on either end, and the um, and uh, the the two lines on top. So remember when I did lips uh, on the other video. I told you there's two dark spots on either side when you start lips, so I said dark spot number one, dark spot number two, then you do this line to represent the cupid's bow and this line to represent the end of the, chip, uh, the lips. So now you have a full shaped lip. This here, this area, this space that you left here, right here, this distance, this is called the fat. This is the mass. This is how thick you want the lips, how thin you want the lips. So let's paint really thin lips. It's basically understanding the basic thickness of lips. And I know these are very rough, I'm sorry. Not much time for detailing. Okay, so this is where you determine where the fat, how much fat is involved. And you determine that by where you place the cupid's bow and the base of the bottom lip. Third is the skin. So when you do paint lips, okay, so you have lip number one, um, corner number one, corner number two, you have this. You have that, you have the basic darkness of the upper lip, and then you have some contouring going on, shading. Okay, these are very rough, abstract looking lips, but bear with me. And the reason why some people need references in order to draw lips is because they don't understand the principles, the realistic principles involved. And drawing these lips. If you understand them, Supra, you'll be able to draw them. Uh, and that's that's a promise. Okay, so let's just try to get that roughed up. Alright, so the skin area. So let's say we got the muscle down, so the movement is set. The fat in place, so here and here we have fat. Now we have skin. This is where the most important thing happens. Skin is the detailing on the top of the surface. Um, skin is where we start getting these cracks in the skin where we get that middle crack in the skin and the bottom lip. This is where we start getting uh, lips when they're shaded. Lips don't just shade like this. They don't just have a blotch of, of white running through them. They have lines of a lighter color. Why? Because the skin is, if you see it from the side, the skin looks like this on lips. So some areas, this area here, if the light is shining on them, is going to capture some light and the rest is in shadow. And that's why we get dark spots, dark lines on lips, and bright lines on lips. Okay? So her lips look very chapped right now, but for the sake of the lesson. Okay? And that's basically it. That's basically it. And what I mean by flesh, um, flesh is the fourth part. Flesh is the, what, uh, what uh, Space said, which is the blood. And flesh sort of um, reminds you that you're painting skin, you're painting uh, a realistic subject that exists that is essentially see-through. It, it, it's a trans skin is transparent. So when someone flushes, when someone is very, very red or very embarrassed, uh, s r blood rushes to their head and therefore we see more blood in their face. We have a certain glow to their face. And that's, that's what we have to understand. The final part, so this was all grayscaling. The final part is when you start getting um, <clears throat> painting and using color that represents uh, blood or um, realistic uh, life, I guess you can call it. So when you when you sort of 
believe that this is an actual lip from an actual human being. So this is it right here. This is how you paint lips. And I know I didn't go in this, this in depth into the last uh, tutorial that I did. And I'm sorry if I'm scatterbrained right now. I have a really bad cold. My head is like killing me. But um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible before I actually start getting into the process of drawing one with you. So um, does everyone understand now what I'm talking about? The fact that you have to understand the muscle, underlying muscle um, textures, and I mean muscle layers underneath, then understanding the fat that the muscle surrounds, which is essentially if the girl has very perky lips, she has a lot of fat in that lip area. Um, you have to understand the top layer of skin, which is very different from the rest of the skin, which it gets dry very fast, it needs to be hydrated more, and therefore it gets chapped, causing a textured surface. Um, that textured surface is what makes lips believable when you paint them because it seems like, oh, if I actually touch these lips, they would have a very dry surface or they would have lip gloss on them. And you're representing the, 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 the varying surface levels of skin on lips. And then finally, flesh. When you color the, 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 the lips, you're representing the colors properly and representing that there is blood running through that face and in those lips. And lips usually all the time get more redness. Why? Number one, there's a tint of redness too. So lips are a different color entirely. And the second thing is that they are more see-through. The skin is even more see-through and you only have a very thin layer of fat and you have very red blood uh, blood covered muscles and then you have the skin on top. So you're literally just seeing a glass, you're seeing red color through some very transparent um, surface textures. Um, Tammy, mine just crack and bleed when it's super cold outside. <laughs> Start carrying around Vaseline. That's how I solve my lip, lip chat problem. <clears throat> okay, so that's basically it. Does everyone understand this? I'm just going to mute it for a second and have some tea. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, chapstick, I don't think chapstick is enough. I think you need to start using Vaseline. Chapstick is very, um, it just stays on the surface, but Vaseline is water-based. So it goes underneath and it really gets um, sucked in. Lip chap uh, or chapstick is really, really, um, doesn't really help you very much. So that's why lips are red. Yes, also there's a tint to the skin as well. <coughs> you get over that Vaseline smell. I know that Vaseline's really weird. It's really good for your face. Anyways, enough beauty talk. Um, so I'm just going to go over it one more time because repetition is perfection. And I'm going to say um, that uh, while I while I say these, I would like for you guys to write them down. Because as I said yesterday, the key to being a good artist is breaking it down. Breaking it down into pieces. Um, breaking down the process. Uh, approaching things in order and that's how you will have a successful finish. I mean if you tried to put the if you're trying to build a computer and you have the the, 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 the body of the computer first or the body of the car first before you even build the engine then you're gonna have some trouble and that's what some of you here do. When you when you paint lips you go in straight into the details and you forget completely about un establishing some sort of muscle structure and, and flesh or fat structure um, before you start going in with the skin and details and that's when I say please don't go into details too soon take it piece by piece and when I paint and as you guys have seen from some of my um, processes I'll try to show you even though I paint lips very very generally and I don't I try not to have too much detail because I feel like it takes away from the cuteness of the subjects I paint um, just give me a second total lag but I do I'll follow this key technique actually wrong one um, this one here what I do is I have a very do you see the general shape of the lips that I have this general shape here uh, reminds me that there is a flesh tone that I'll be painting it reminds me that there this general shape that I'll be working with, the general fullness that I'll be working with, and it helps me understand the basic general um, parameters of the lips. Some people go straight in with the details, and I don't include the details till later on, till way later. And I'm just trying to find the place where I did it. This is very old. It's from two years ago, I think. 
And I don't I don't really include the layers on until very, very late, um, the layers of skin. Now it really helps to create a convincing lip because you're literally building it the way, um, you know, if you were actually making a human being, what would you put on first, the skin or the flesh or, or the muscle and then the fat? And that's how you're supposed to be basically doing it. Okay, so I'm going to repeat it one more time. So the first thing you lay on is the muscle. Um, muscle meaning the movement. Uh, what your lips are going to be doing, you have to know that. So what you have to know is that if your lips are going to be smiling, you have to make sure that smile affects everything else on the face. The nose is enlarged, the, the eyes are creasing and squinting, and the lips are taking up the entire parameter uh, or the entire potential and, and width, their entire width potential. So if you have a eye, eye, nose, and you have lips like this, when it smiles, the nose increases in size, the lips decrease in size, they're like this, and the lips take their full full potential, per diameter potential, meaning they f take on their full, okay, that's really weird, <laughs> their full length, okay, because they are muscles and they can stretch. And laughing lips, smiling lips are very different from non-smiling lips because the skin and the surface texture is stretched, therefore acting differently, okay? And then the fat, um, after you establish the muscle, the fat is basically how perky the lips are, how 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 fat the lips are, how, you know, I don't know, using words that, I don't know, how jiggly the lips are, I don't know. Um, and that, that's basically how much shading you're going to have to include. So if you want a very, very round lips, you're going to have to have a lot of gradual shading and you have to know when to not shade, when to not blend. And then three, uh, skin is the layer on top, which is the details. When you decrease the size of your brush, so again, when you start painting a face, make sure your brush is large in the first hour, medium small, medium level in the middle hour, and or whatever if you divide the process, middle half hour or whatever, and in the final hour, your, your, your brush is the smallest that it can be. Um, the smallest that you want it to be. Don't start off small brush and then go large brush. You're just screwing yourself up that way, um, okay? So always start off big, then go small. Same thing with lips, start off big, find the general parameters, find the movement, and then throw in the fat, shade it in with a big brush, and then when the skin comes in, you have to start decreasing the size of your brush. And flesh, I flesh is sort of, the reason why I kept it last is because sometimes, sometimes it affects each one, each one of these levels, because sometimes you're painting in color, and sometimes you're painting in grayscale, and later on you're gonna be bringing in the color. So what I'll be doing with you guys, I'll be painting in grayscale, and because I don't want you guys confused and I have to do a color lesson all over again on why I use purples and yellows, I'll kind of leave that to the end. So right now I'm just going to be painting it for you in grayscale. Does everyone understand that? About 20 minutes now. About 20 minutes. Um, a bit on lips. I was talking about lips, Mattia. <clears throat> you can watch it again. I'll be posting it on YouTube. But now that you're here, you don't have to like to watch the whole thing. You'll just watch the first 20 minutes of what I said, which is a bunch of repetition. Okay? So you didn't miss much yet. Okay, so let's keep this on the side. Let, let me just enlarge my canvas so that you guys, instead of turning off the layer, I want you guys to keep seeing the rules nearby. So let's paint some lips together. And... Um, Let me just see. Okay. So let's begin. How do how do I start painting lips? Let me act like I, I just learned how to paint lips. By the way, welcome everyone. I'm sorry if I haven't named you yet. Um, I'll just go through you guys. Zeon, Tammy, Supra, Space, Satan, Pete, Aluriel, Welcome, Niall, Notful, Mattia, Capo, Jungle Pants, uh, Stargate, um, Ellie, Douglas, Bot Buddy, Dot Buddy, Dirty Paws, and Annie. Welcome, guys. <coughs> and for those who just came in just now, because you guys like went up again, um, welcome. And for those nameless ones, welcome as well. Choose to stay in the shadows. It's okay. Okay, so let's begin. I'm a person who doesn't know how to draw lips. This is the first time I've drawn lips in my life. I have a set of rules here beside me. How do I approach it? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start off with basic grayscaling, so I'm going to get my grayscale level here. I'm going to act like this gray background is the skin tone, 
and I'm going to go in and throw it with muscle. What kind of lips are we drawing? Let's say like gently, gently smiling lips. Okay, so I'm just going to draw general parameters of where I want these lips to go. So generally smiling lips. So let me get some muscle movement in there. Just using a soft brush now because it's sort of for the sake of time. I don't want to have to start getting all blendy blendy just so that um, I don't take too long. Okay, so let me just get the corners in. So what I did was just now, just basically with me here, I do a basic general shape of where I want the lips. So in my head, I'm seeing like lips that look like this in my head. And I want to make them look realistic. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not starting off with line art. Some of you have the image in your head. You get it down with lines and then you go and paint over. Never do that. First of all, give yourself the credit of being able to remember what it is you're imagining and keeping able, being able to remember it throughout. You don't need lines. You don't need to bend on lines. They're crutches. Second thing is that you're going to have to erase all these lines anyway. They're going to get in your way and they're going to decrease the realism a little bit. It's going to look like your drawing has a really thick eye, um, lip liner across and nobody wants to look like they're stuck in the 80s. <clears throat> so just get away from those lines. You don't need it. You're not doing cartoon work. If you're doing cartoon work, it's very different. But right here, we're trying to paint realistically and then work down from that. If you want to take it real, um, into cartoons, skip the painting session and go straight into the lines. But for now, we're painting realistically. Okay, or as realistically as my style allows, if I have style. All right, so I'm just going to get, so dot number one and dot number two are in set. Remember, I told you guys there's six dark spots on the face, the two irises, two nostrils, and two lip corners. When I want to paint lips, you have to make sure you have these two dots in here to, to help you find the width of the lips and the parameters of the lips. Okay, and usually these dots are in the top lip top lip and bottom lip sort of just hangs through but they do connect to the bottom lip of course okay I don't know what's going on here with my no wonder I don't have my glasses on okay there we go just give me a minute Okay, so there's the basic lines, I'm trying to find a shading for the bottom area, I'm trying to find the top area. So right now, what am I doing? At this stage, I'm already thrown into the fat stage, but I'm still in sort of the muscle stage, but I found the basic sort of, sort of sitting of the sort of seat of the lips, and I'm just trying to establish some sort of fat structure for the lip. So the bottom lip here is very, very fat. So I have to represent that with shading. And I have to put this dark shade in the right spot to represent. If this whole thing is dark, it's going to seem like she's wearing one, too much makeup, or two, the entire thing is flat or underneath. So I have to shade it in a way where it seems like if I brought a line, the line would bend like this, okay, which is where they get that kissing thing from. Okay, okay. Okay, and then from my knowledge of, so let's say I don't know anything about it, and then someone's told me and they've promised me that if I paint the top lip darker, the lips will look a bit more realistic. So let me put that into use. Let me see. Let me paint the top lip a bit darker. Okay, it's already starting to look better, starting to look more realistic. So this is a trick that I do. You see how before I did this, there was an entire dark area here like this. What I do, what I do is I bring in a light, I, I drop tool the skin around it, and I bring it in like, like so. What this does is it creates the effects that the lips are sticking out, capturing light on those two sides. <coughs> okay, I'm happy, Marcus. <coughs> so let me zoom out. I hate zooming in and I paint. Okay, let me erase this. All right, so let's get into, so we're still on fat, so I still have to establish fat. Do I feel like I've established enough fat on these lips? So let's keep going. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to use the burn tool, and I'm going to darken two corners a little bit more. Hey, X, how are you? Welcome. 
and I'm just going to keep rendering some sort of fat structure around these lips. Try to keep my, my two corners here dark. Remember, I'm still generally in a very, very light um, early stage right now. So these colors aren't supposed to be dark. Some of you are saying, oh my god, she needs to use some black because I can't even see what's going on. You can't use this black, this much black this soon because black is a very heavy, t very, very heavy uh, sh shadow. And so what it does is it's like having a big silk, um, it's like having a mattress and getting a, a, a ton and putting it on the mattress. The mattress is going to get, it's just going to collapse on itself because it's way too heavy. That's what happens to your drawings. If your drawing is very light all around and is very soft all around, you have this big black coming out of nowhere and just um, collapsing the entire balance, the tone balance or the um, tone balance of the entire thing then not shadow I didn't call shadow heavy shadow is a guest and I did not call her heavy and she's not here today though um, I said dark dark is very sh black is very shadow heavy okay okay stop 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 teasing me um, what was I saying so yes it's it's very it's very it weighs down the image too much so you guys need to sort of take it easy with the black don't jump into the black too soon okay see ya Okay, and so what I do again is I bring that light shade in and then keep shading. I'm just going to keep throwing in some of these. Okay, try to get some nice structure going on. And then the Cupid's bow is very important. It's a very, very important part. Now, now I'm going to get a lighter color, and guess what? I'm what I'm still on the fat stage. Fat stage um, is going to be the stage you sp I think you spend the most time on. Um, I, I, I'm saying I think because some of you are very different. Some of you feel like you have to make the lips look a bit more, um, a little bit more uh, perky than others. Some of you, some of you just want to represent lips through a simple color, but um, but this fat stage for me is very important because it's where I get all the mass and all the realism from. So what I'm doing with this light tone is, and I'm going to show you in a sec how this is also used in makeup. I I bring this light color on the top area first. What this does is again it further enhances the perkiness of the lips to represent them properly. This area is sort of most of the time emerged in darkness anyway, so it's going to act like it's a shadow of a nose. I'll render the nose soon too. Okay. And I'm going to keep going. And now we need to add some of that light on the bottom lip. The bottom lip always captures more light than the top lip. Why? As I said in the video before, um, this is, okay, let's say this is your, okay, your, and these are lips. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, all right. When the shadow hits, when light hits this way, what happens is that it casts a shadow like this, and then we get this shadow, we get the nose shadow, and then we get a shadow here and light up here. So what I just did is I put the light here, the way the light hits it here, put the shadow in this area, the way it hits it here. And when I paint a nose, I'll put light in this area where the light hits it, a little bit of shadow in this area where, there no, where there's no light, and a lot of light on the forehead, and a lot of light on the chin. But this lip here is also getting some light. Some people confuse this and say, no, this lip is dark still. No, that's not true. This lip captures a lot of light because it's not really underneath this lip shadow here. No, it's not. The shadow goes inward because the light sort of attacks linearly, even though my line is completely con contradicting what I'm saying. Okay, so this lip here, this area here is going to be covered in light. So let me just remove that. Just one second. So to recap, one, we've established the muscles. The lips have a very gentle, sort of modest smile to them. We've established the fat, and this fat is sort of, um, sorry, just let me try to get a basic nose structure. Do you remember what I'm doing right now is painting the wife part? If you guys follow the nose, how to? Okay, 
It's a very general nose right there. And <clears throat> this fat layer, again, I've told you, now we're at a stage right now where I've lost something very important. Do you guys know what I've lost so far? There's a very, that's part of the six most important parts in a face. And can anyone tell me what I've sort of painted over and I've lost it? What do I need to reestablish? What have I lost? The black spots, exactly. So what I, when I do these, look what happens. Look at what happens when I do these. Uh, the dark spots, um, Annie, not the highlights. The dark spots meaning um, in every lip that you paint, there's areas that should always be the darkest. And these areas are the two corners of the lips. Always, with every pair of lips you're ever going to you're ever gonna paint, these areas are going to be the darkest. And what I have to do is reestablish them. But look, get ready for some magic. When I get these areas dark, it's going to seem like the lips are finished. Some of you, that you're going to stop painting at this stage. We're going to keep going into skin and flesh. But some of you can stop painting at this stage because your style only demands that much. And you, maybe you're working with an anime style. Maybe you want to get a gentle hue over everything so you don't want to add in those dark areas. But I'm going to take you further into the realistic realm so you can choose where to stop in this journey of ours. Okay? So watch what's going to happen to the realism. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? <laughs> Forgive my passion, but I love these. I love this part in a painting. Just let me get... Okay. Okay. All right, watch as, as the lips sort of emerge from the surrounding, the, 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 the values that it was in before, they're sort of emerging now. And I am using a soft brush, sort of taking away from the, from the effect. But look at how these lips have started to emerge. And I'm adding a little bit of light on the bottom corner areas here. This is going to add more, even more of a, of a perkiness. Remember, I got that color and swooped it in. I'm just going to get a light color, throw it in the under corner areas. Okay, look at how it's emerging. I'm just going to keep shading around these areas, keeping them nice and dark. And the lips are just emerging right through it. Look at how the darkness that I introduced into this area um, opened up space for so much other, um, so many other uh, add-ons. So it opened up space for the, the highlights that I put underneath the dark spots as well as the highlights on the insides. And now I'm going to put one more dark spot and this dark spot will add to the fat layer Yes, because it is. Thank you, Mattia, because it is very easy. Okay. Oh, well, okay, well, I've never known what I'm doing then. But now you know the process. Now you understand the basic process of it. And um, I think you can, I think you basically understand it now. Okay? So we're still not done. We, I feel like there is still a level of darkness I haven't finished. So at this stage, what I do is I zoom in and add another layer of darkness in there just to represent that the fat is even thicker in that area and causing even more of a shadow. And look at that realism, how it just emerges from there. Okay. Yay! Spring break for artists, not for morons. Artists, we use our spring break for improvement. So what I did next was, I still haven't, look at this, I still haven't added this light here and I'm already getting so much out of it. I'm getting, already getting so much out of these lips. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add, and you can do this after the next stage or you can do this now. I'm going to add in a layer or a sliver of light just on that that little bend that everyone has in their lips, that sort of like fishy bend. And after that, I'm going to get some let me just save this. I'll throw this in the Dropbox page so you guys can have these notes too. So nothing is exclusive. And I'm going to get in 
And remember that profile that I drew for you guys? I'm going to get in that light and I'm just going to throw it in there. But I'm going to throw it in there in one general stroke and then I'm going to start throwing it in in anticipation for the what. What am I doing right now? I'm not really stroking in, in general strokes. What am I doing in anticipation for the what? Anyone, can anyone tell me what I'm anticipating at this stage? No, I just painted the fat. Yes, the skin. Exactly. <clears throat> so what I'm doing now is I'm decreasing my brush like I promised you should. And I'm starting to paint in the general strokes of light being captured. And all of a sudden we have a heavy load of detail. Do you see this heavy load of detail coming out of nowhere? We just have a heavy load of detail now, and what we have to do is sort of correct that by adding detail everywhere else. Some of you can stop at this stage, um, the stage before the skin. Some of you can keep going. It's really your call at this point, but I'm going to take it the whole way. I'm just going to add in a little bit on these sides of the lips. <coughs> I heard the answer a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you were here for the other lessons. You are here for the semester before. Um, and so what we're doing at this, na at this stage now, we're, we're introducing detail. So we added the detail for the bottom lip. Now we have to start really, we can't blend anymore. At this stage, we have to start sacrificing blending and start bringing in tones that we promise ourselves not to blend because some people over blend. So what we have to start doing is being very nice our painting and not over blending it to death. So I'm going to sort of take things down a bit darker. This is just my style. You guys can take it where you need to take it. Okay, so she has very, very big lips, very tiny nose. <coughs> Probably every guy's dream. And I'm going to bring in this, decrease my brush again, and I'm going to bring in these details up here too. But how am I going to bring them? I'm not bringing them with a light tone. No, no, no. I'm going to have to keep this area dark. I'm going to have to keep the top lip dark. What I'm doing is I'm bringing in a very gentle, almost one level darker, and just throwing it in there. Fap, fap. Where is the... Uh, this is the point where I usually stop. Yeah. If you keep going, you'll only get, you'll only get um, good feedback, you know? So it doesn't hurt to keep going. Okay. And now I'm just going to get my burn again and just de darken a bit more to show that these lips are really stacking on top of each other. Okay. And I'm going to darken just a bit on the outer part. Just to see, just like a little bit of lip liner, but natural lip liner, just, just to outline the lips and separate them from the surrounding. And I'm going to zoom out again because I'm way too zoomed in at this point. Just remember, you guys, always zoom yourselves out. Never, never, whoever told you zoom in for details was a liar. And I'm going to get my dodge tool and I'm just going to highlight a bit more. And look, I added sort of like a like a sliver of light here that I'm going to be interrupting um, with some detailing more. Right now, what I'm doing is representing a very moist, but 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 uh, but textured upper lower lip surface texture. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm running out of words. <laughs> Tiny is too weird. <laughs> Mitya, we're all just psychic. We can answer Esther's questions before she asks them. I think you guys answer them because there's a lag. I don't know. No, no, no. You guys, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Yeah. Esther, why is it that dark? I noticed that, and sometimes I put it, but I don't know why. Uh, what do you mean? Why is it that dark in real life? The lips? The upper lip? Um, that's just that's just basically how they are. Sometimes they're not that dark. Some people have just purely sh um, uh, uh, a purely very uh, same tone lips, uh, upper and bottom, but the dark just under the white. 
Why, why does that happen? Well, it's just different skin tones. It's just different uh, genetics that cause this kind of thing. The little dark part under the light at the top of the lips. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a different way of lips working. You can get it. Uh, you can get rid of it. And then you'll just have lips that look like they're wearing a lot of makeup. You can get rid of it. See, it still works. And I kind of like it with it on. <clears throat> but it is, it is, it's not really shadow. It's just a, a, a sort of like a skin tint. It's like what happens to lips. It just lips look like that. Let me show you. It happens to a lot of Middle Eastern um, faces. And, yeah. Okay, so this is an Indian girl celebrity. Do you see the darkness on the top of her lips? And then do you see the sliver of white? And um, look at this. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that is. Um, let me try to find another one. Do you see this top area, how it's dark? This is just natural lip liner. Yeah, Google's retarded. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. Hi, Peb. Welcome. So right now we're almost done the fat layer. We're, I mean, the fat, um, the skin layer. And, um, I mean, we're almost done the fat layer. We're sort of uh, blending back and forth between fat and skin because we're trying to balance the levels here. And what we're going to keep doing is introducing more texture. So I'm going to throw my, my brush back to, to, to normal. I know I sort of disrupted the small, big to small, but it's, I'm just trying to balance the levels here with the dodge tool and burn. And I'm going to just keep adding in. I always thought that it was a slight thickening of the top tissue um, um, in the transition to facial skin. That's true. That that's that's true. That 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 can happen um, as well. Um, I'm not really sure the actual biological process of why lips are dark near the top, but um, but that is possible. And I'm going to keep shading areas that I want to have lighter. So do you see it? I'm basically doing it in front of you. I'm not really just making a no word tutorial. I'm right in front of you and I'm doing it right here. This is not magic. I didn't buy lip in a can and open it and throw it on my monitor. Or I didn't hire a professional to come in and paint it for me. I followed a basic set of rules that I'm explaining to you guys that I want you guys to follow. Okay? I'm going to darken in that area just a touch more. And then lighten this area up because it is getting some light, sort of like a bulgy area. And I'm going to soften that up. And what I'm going to do next, this is where I stop. I don't really like to shade the top lip. I leave the top lip alone. Why? Because it's sort of as soon as I shade it, it hits that level of realism that I don't like to step over. Um, <laughs> lip in again. Um, but um, but for those who want to, it's just basically the same idea. The more textured um, uh, the lip is, the more it looks chapped. But if you want that realistic uh, detail, you can go ahead and I'll just do it here with you. So remember, gravity pulls down fat. And so when you have fat on the upper lip and you have very perky lips, you're not going to have as many wrinkles near the top as you do near the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to give a little bit of highlights for the nose. Pasted lip photos over the top to detail. Never saw the point. I read a tutorial where the guy pasted lip photos over the top to detail. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Some people use textures for a lot of stuff. I don't really use textures for facial features. I use textures for actual brick textures or or uh, or some sort of um, some sort of thing. But I, I think at that point you're way too lazy to just throw in a couple of small strokes. So next thing I do. Is I get the sharpen tool. This is a new tool for some of you. 
Sharpen tool is just, you know, where the blur and the, and the smudge is? Sharpen tool is the triangle. And I just start sharpening it up because sharpen tool is really effective to, to reveal your, your brush and, the, and how much has been lost in the brush painting process. So basically how much of your brush texture is lost. And it sort of helps me to lighten up um, some of the areas. So brighten tool works like the dodge a little bit. I mean, sharpen tool works like the dodge. And it um, sort of adds in that texture of lips that comes with lip gloss or it comes with dry skin. And I, and I sharpen the entire area. What kind of magazine was that? You know, I've seen some really crappy tutorials on that Imagine FX magazine. Really crappy tutorials. I'm just going to throw in a chin too. So do you see what the sharpen tool did, you guys? Do you see that? And under the lips, the reason why I threw in a chin is because under lips there's a small shadow. This is the upper lip, sh bottom lip shadow. This is the shadow of the bottom lip separating the space between, I'm um, separating the chin from the lip area. Okay? You see how they're, they're looking more and more realistic every, every, um, every detail we add? It's because the sharpen tool really brought out those details. It saved you like three or four hours worth. Never outline. That was a big mistake I just made. Okay, her chin is a bit too low. Or too high. Again, zoom out, you idiot. So again, don't forget the usefulness of the sharpen tool. It's not detail cheating for those of you here who decide to make their lives a little bit harder. Um, it's not detail. Um, it's not cheating. What it is, it's, it's, it's your brush. As you brush, you use transfer, or you use pen pressure, you use a lot of details there. You lose a lot of details. So what you do is you use the sharpen tool to, re to, to find those details again. Okay? Let me just, kind of looks like my sister's sister-in-law. If my sister's married and she has a sister-in-law, is she also my sister-in-law? Or is it just he was sister-in-law? I don't know. No, she's not my sister-in-law? Okay, then my sister's sister-in-law. Okay, merge down. Face is kind of looking retarded, but excuse me. Just get some cheeks as well. So, I ask you now, did we use a reference? Did we use a scientific um, anatomy book? Did we use, no, what, we, what did we use? Um, what we did use, backwards talker, um, is rules. We used rules. These rules help us find things easier. Help us discover things a little bit easier. Okay? So as I shaded, do you see how this area is lighter than this area? This area is lighter than this area here versus here because this area is what? I know you guys can do it. I know you guys can tell me. Remember the profile. Remember how light falls down on a face. This area is what? Let's see. I'll give them a chance. <laughs> the area above the lip is light, but why?
not being shadowed by something, being hit by light, protruded, exactly. That's why this area is lighter, and if you do lighten up this area, you will have very realistic looking lips. Okay, and that's it. And after that, you can add in some details, you can add in some lip gloss. I like to add in, you know, that surrounding light. That really just throws the realism to another dimension. It really helps. So what I do is I get the dodge tool and I sort of make a surrounding light. I'm going to do it a little bit extra so you guys can see. Sort of like a surrounding light around it. Now it looks like a milk mustache, but it's still cute. Okay. I usually just make it so it looks like she drank milk recently. Um, yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, that happens because you don't blend it in up into the cheek. Sometimes people, what Mattia is talking about is that when they do make the, this area protruding, now she looks like she has either too much powder, actually not, not yet, now she looks like she has milk on her face um, because she decided to have milk and cookies even though she's on a diet. Um, what you do to avoid that is if you do have this much light in this area, you just blend it up into the cheek. Okay? Blend it up into the cheek. What we did to achieve these lips today is a very basic process and and I showed you exactly what I went through. I broke down my process for you and I know you guys can do it too because why? You have brains enough to to, to, to monitor, I mean to, to navigate through a computer. You sure as fuck have, I'm sorry, but you sure as hell have the brains to do this for yourself, to give yourself a bit of an extra quality to your life and make your portfolio that much stronger and everyone should have a, a touch of art in their life everybody and you guys can do this you guys <laughs> Marcus you guys can do this you guys can paint lips like this I swear to God you can it's very scientific it's very basic um, different different uh, different places have different I mean different people have followed different golden rules but the basic idea of golden rules which I talked about yesterday so you have eye number one, and then you have the width of the eyes. So basically, this is eye number one, number eye number two, and then you have the space in between. So you have perfect symmetry, and then you have the end of eye number one. And that's where the nose starts. The end of eye number two, and that's where the nose starts. And there should be equal distance between the center point here, which is perfect symmetry, and then the end of both, the lips can either be either be aligned with the nose and with the end of the with the with the middle of the eye they cannot reach to the other end of the eye so if these are the lip if these are the eyes okay really <laughs> freaky eyes they have to reach only up till there they can't reach until the end of the eye there they can't reach until the end of the actual eyeball okay what if uh, I like drawing misshapen freaks? Then break all the rules. And that's how you draw something scary. I mean, when I was watching Spider-Man, I was scared shitless because that guy was so freaky and so well done. So his eyes were like perfectly, beautifully human. And then he's got these nose, but his lips were like all the way over there. And that's why that guy scared me. And he had like these eyebrows and these very human-esque things. He looked very real. They did a really good job with that movie. Okay. So this guy will follow you and hide under your bed if you don't practice art. All right, so look what we have. We have a pair of lips. And, um, yeah. So, Niall, do you know now where to put lips? Um, <coughs> uh, between both, not Venom, uh, Professor Thing from Spider-Man. Professor Armless. So Niall, are you good? Just make sure that it's within the eyeballs. So if you had lines going through your the dark part of your eyeballs, um, then yeah. Uh, 1,000, please send it over. That's why I can take a look at it. So yeah, I'm done for lips now. Um, I hope this was a good lesson for today. I hope you guys um, sort of understood what I'm talking about. And I did nose, so I'm not really going to go into the nose here. I did do a nose.
for you guys. So do you guys need anything else? Do you guys need anything else before I go on to critiques? Because I'll be posting this on YouTube and putting it on my front page too. So don't worry. They are very stylized, um, but you can find lips like this in real life. Oh yeah, three quarter. I, I promise I do three quarter. Okay, three quarter lips are a bit more difficult. Same process though. Um, same process. So muscle first, then fat, then skin, then flesh. But what happens in three quarter? And I'm just gonna go over it for you guys. Basically, the same process, but, but it really depends on the lighting, and we can't do every lighting situation. So let's say this is the face. Whoa. And, I, and I'm going to answer uh, Spence um, Supra's question too about cartoony lips. So yeah, thanks guys for reminding me. <coughs> so, let's say that this is three-quarter view and we have the symmetry line going through. So symmetry line looks something like this. Maybe the nose a bit better with that, but that's okay. Losing time. So when you do lips, what you have to remember is this symmetry line. Basically, it looks like the face from the side, but it's actually on the three-quarter part of the face. So I'm going to sort of decrease that opacity a bit so that you guys can see. Shit stains. I should have had it in. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what I'm going to do? Take that Photoshop. Okay. Uh, Esther, I got a new CS6. It's much faster. I actually did get CS6 and it's not faster. Maybe because it was a cracked version. Um, but it was sh complete crap. It lagged down my computer because it saved every five minutes and it had all these glitches and I'm just gonna wait until they sort of perfect it before I download it. I like CS5. I'm comfortable here. <laughs> CS5 is just fine. <coughs> and I can save. I have like a natural, I've built it sort of like a natural fear of losing my, my information. Okay, so for those who want to learn how to do lips from side view. All right, so what we just did, we got side view eye, 30 quarter view eye, 3 quarter view eye, 3 quarter view nose. I've taught you how to paint both. And now we're on to 3 quarter lips. Remember what I told you, Levy, or Lev, or I mean not Levy, um, Niles, is that lips stay within the parameter of the eyeballs. So again, look at how this worked out. The distance here is larger than the distance here because we are in 3 quarter view. Okay? That's one. So now we have we have our lines here. Okay, and let's just decrease those down a bit so we can see what we're doing. Everyone following me? Everyone had enough bashing about Photoshop? <laughs> what about expressions with lips? Expressions is Expressions, that's when you're going to have to start spending more time on the muscle part. Because number one, you have to start doing sort of like figure drawings of expressions. So you have to have like a whole session of just learning how expressions work. And you have to start understanding how lip expressions affect forehead, affect eyebrow, affect eyes, and affect nose. And um, and uh, and for for painting, again, you have to spend a lot of time on the muscle part. Everything else after that, uh, supra, the skin, the flesh, and the fat, that's all you know how to do it, you know how to shade. Okay? So this is three-quarter lips, all right? So what I did was I found this, I found this. And now can anyone tell me what is next? What important part am I missing? So I'm going to make her smiling a little bit. What important part am I missing? So remember, the lips can be within this parameter. 
or this parameter. It really depends on you know how this person's lips are. If it's more than that, it's just going to be really scary. The dots. Okay, good. So I'm going to make them a little bit less than that, a little bit less than this parameter, but it's going to have to be within the area. So these dots, look at this. We already have where the lips are, the fat, because we drew this symmetry line. We know, because we drew the nose, we know the distance. We already have this this sort of leveling here. And you guys have to understand that lips, when you draw this side, you don't just draw them like this. You have to draw them the way the fat builds around. So when you do add in the two corner sides and you connect them in, you know how they're working. Because that's basically what we're going to do. Okay, and then we're going to just connect. We're going to have to think about that bend. And this is where stacking is involved, this area here. Remember that little, you know how the upper lip has shaped like this? You have this thing, this little bulgy thing, this little ball of fat that helps to keep the mouth closed. Okay, this ball of fat is represented in three-quarter view a little bit differently than front view because in this, this way you're seeing the side of the ball. So you have to represent the side of the ball like that and you have to show how it's actually bulging out. I know Manga Studio. It's it's really cool. A lot of a lot of professional um, comic book artists use it, but it's very limited. If your style is incredibly edgy and um, different, and you don't have to focus a lot on proportion, and I haven't seen a lot of sort of uh, Frank Miller esque stuff done on Manga Studio, but it's really good for those who have a very unique style, like Ghost World and stuff like that. Not Ghost World. I think it's Ghost World. I don't know. <clears throat> I know the version that I downloaded was crap. The tools were all over a place. I know that there's a new version where the tools are easier to access. And I think if you're a painter who's used to... Um, yeah, it does suck for line art. Um, but I think, Luriel, if you... Um, I mean, uh, whoever asked at 1,000. 1,000, yeah. I think if you... Um, if you're very used to Photoshop and you want to paint like that, um, then you're going to have to get a, a version that has your tools and the same shortcuts, re reassign the sor shortcuts to be very similar to Photoshop because nothing is worse than having um, different shortcuts. Oh my God, it's just a hell on earth. But anyway, let's get back to lips, okay? So what I did here was I found that bulge and after I found that bulge, for those who want to do lips three-quarter view, I sort of find that upper part and then find the lower part. And there you go. We have very decent template for when we start painting three-quarter lips. Does everyone, did everyone see how to do that? So first thing you need is your symmetry line. Um, and it's not, it's not Okay, you have like a three-quarter view, but your symmetry line is here. No, the symmetry line runs around the roundness of your face. All right. Is everyone paying attention? Second thing you need to do is you need to find your golden uh, rule, if you want, lines. If you want to paint a creep, creepy, freaky dude, you just have to break the golden rules, and then you'll have really freaky looking... Okay, but if you want to paint a, a decent looking face, that's very pre pre pretty. Um, golden rule, golden ratio, same thing. <coughs> and after that, you need to find your dots. <laughs> as um, There's no better tools. Um, it just depends on what you need. Uh, does everyone pay attention? I'm paying too much attention to try to work on my novel. Oh, thanks. And then you need your black dots to help you guide uh, to help guide you through where the lips are going to be formed. And then four, when you draw the fat, the fat from its side. So when you draw that little bulge that happens with lips, make sure that you show it's a bulge. In in front quarter in, in front view, it's just a little bend downward. But in side view, you see that light, and, like that little bend. You need to represent that. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's just shade this very, very quickly. 
Again, keep those corners dark. Make sure your upper lip is darker. And depending on where the lighting is coming from, shade according to that. So I'm sort of going to keep the lighting the same, which is that I'm going to do it from the side. Okay? And just start shading and start rendering the fat. Keep your brush large. And now you have lips from the side. Does everyone understand that? It's all about perspective. It's all about keeping um, to your golden rule. It's all about mathematics. It's all about dividing your image. It's all about planning your drawing. Planning the drawing is very, very important. If you don't plan it, you miss, you skip like a shitload of rules and then you end up with mistakes and you're like, why didn't my work look good? And that's because you skip rules that you should be keeping in there. And if you're a good artist, a good artist knows what he doesn't know is important. Um, and he knows that what, basically to rephrase, a good artist knows that he needs to learn more <laughs> and that he there's things that he can't sacrifice, um, he or she can't sacrifice um, while they draw. Okay? And to answer Supra's question, how to make lips look like they're cartoony but full at the same time. So your uh, the artist that you showed me, the reason why his picture looks so good to you is because number one, he kept the angles right. And number two, he understood that the top lip is darker. And it doesn't need that much reinforcement. And the bottom lip sort of has its own structure. I don't know how he did it basically. I don't share his style, but... So first of all, it was a side view, and second, he sort of understood the basics of having these important things. So he had the two dark corners, he had the side view understood, he understood that the top lip was darker, and this is all stuff that I just taught you just now. Okay? I don't know, it was, a, it was an artist that you showed me. And that's basically it. Understand the realistic rules before you apply them. So that you can get a realistic looking pair of lips. Okay? So you, you, you probably can shade very well, but not being able to shade in the right spot, you might as well not be able to shade well. So understand that you, there's a rule for where you have to place these things. Okay? And you have to make sure you keep to those rules and respect them. All right, and that's it.